I wanted to post a quick follow-up video to a video I, I created a couple days ago about setting up a testing process for Adobe Captivate 6 courses that you're publishing to mobile devices. As I mentioned in that video, one of the huge, huge features of Adobe Captivate 6 is the HTML5 publishing. And so we need to be able to test this content on our devices so we can ensure they're instructionally sound and all the interactions work and, and have all the components that we want. But uploading that to an LMS every single time is not the easiest way to do it. I want to test it directly from my computer. So I want to make sure you've seen that video. Uh, you can come to our blog to view it. You can check it out on our YouTube page as well. This video shows the setup process. Uh, now I want to show you how to use everything that you've set up and so you could really just kind of see the workflow. So I've already set up the testing server. Uh, I'm on the same Wi-Fi connection as my uh, device. I'm going to be using an iPad in this situation. So like I said, this video is really meant to just show you what your workflow is going to be every single time. If you haven't checked out the first video, I recommend watching that so you can see how I set up this process. I'm going to start in Captivate. I've already recorded a quick uh, software demo just going through looking at some of the features of Adobe Captivate 6. I'm going to add a new slide in here, uh, just a blank slide. I wanted to put um, an interaction. We talked about interactions in the last video, how cool they are. Uh, really nice because they publish to HTML5 as well. I'm going to use the tab interaction. This is just a, an easy way to, to have the user click on a tab and see some content. Um, maybe these tabs will be uh, Adobe, oops, let me change the title here, Adobe Captivate 6 Features. Uh, tab 1 will make this HTML5 Publishing. Uh, I could obviously put in the content for that here as well. Tab 2. We'll put themes here. And I could go on and on with all the cool features of Captivate 6. But I'm just going to put a couple of tabs. I could customize the content. I'm not going to worry about that now. I'm just going to click OK. And now I've got this interaction placed. So the point now is I've created a course. Um, I've created the theme, I've added content, I want to start testing. Before you begin testing on mobile devices, one thing you do want to add into your workflow is to pull up the HTML5 tracker. This tracker is going to show you any content or slides within your project that aren't publishable to HTML5. Uh, and it's just a quick way to know. This will be really useful for those of you who are opening old courses or courses that you've maybe made in Captivate 5 or Captivate 4 and wanting to publish those to mobile devices. So I can see I don't have any unsupported content, which is fantastic. I'm going to go File, Publish. I'm going to call this demo. Uh, I'll leave it called Captivate 6. Now, where I publish it, publish it to is very important. In the first video, I showed you how to install that testing server. And it installs itself by default on the C drive, or if you're on a Mac, it's in your Applications folder. I'm going to go down and find ZAMP, which is the name of that server, the htdocs folder, which is the actual server folder. That's where all your content is going to go. And I had made a cp folder in that htdocs folder. That's where I'm going to publish this to. I'm going to publish just the HTML5 version. I could also publish a Flash version as well, but I'm really just worried about mobile in this case. So I'm just going to do the HTML5 version. I'm going to click Publish. And this content is going into that folder. Keep in mind, you could also publish this to your desktop or to your My Documents folder and copy it over to the web server at a later point. But I'm just kind of killing two birds with one stone here by publishing it directly there. I can view the output if I want in a browser. And you'll see that, of course, it tests itself exactly how I would uh, 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 plan it to. The uh, widget's going to load up and everything. but. Again, I'm not worried about how it tests on my desktop. 
I want to try it on a mobile device. Now remember, here's that folder. You can see the htdocs folder on my C drive, the CP folder inside of there, it made a folder for me, Captivate 6, and here are the project files. You might have other courses in this folder too. You can see I have a few things published and these are all courses that I've wanted to test on my mobile device. If I open up the index file just like we saw when we previewed it, the big difference is that to test it on the server we need to replace the first part of this with local host. This didn't work though because my server was not running. So I'm going to start my server. The server is called ZAMP. I'm going to open up the control panel. Again, that first video showed you how to install this. I'm going to start the server. Now that the server's running, if I do localhost and then the path to the file I want to test, it loads up perfectly fine. And here's the course. I can hit play. I can begin going through it. I'll just pause it for right now. Finally, I need to test this exact same URL on my mobile device in order to preview this. The only difference is that the mobile device does not understand what localhost is. Localhost is just a term for your computer. You need to replace localhost with your IP address. Now what the heck is your IP address? I showed you this in the first video. The way you find that is to open up either your command prompt if you're on Windows, which you can just hit the Windows key, type in CMD, hit enter. If you're on a Mac, you open up terminal, you type in IPCONFIG, IP config. Look toward the top of all this mess so you can see I typed in IP config, it spit out all this stuff. Right here is my IP4 address 192.168.120.102. So if, if you wanted to just verify you were doing this correctly, you could type this in instead of localhost 192.168.120.102. And the course should load up because that's the address for your computer. This same address will work as long as your iPad or Android tablet is on the same network. So let me pull up my iPad and I have a webcam set up so you can see it. So here's my iPad. I've got Safari open. I'm ready to test. Like I said, what I need to do is put in this same address. In the other video, I mentioned Adobe Shadow and showed you how you can use that. Uh, I'm not using Adobe Shadow here because I'm showing you the way that everyone can do it, no matter what browser or, uh, or, or whether or not you have Adobe Shadow installed. This is the way that will work for everyone. You don't need to have Adobe Shadow to do it this way. So I'm going to type in 192. 168.120.102 forward slash cp forward slash now again I've got to put in that whole path to captivate 6 index.html but if I actually just cheat and stop at that folder cp that I created What's kind of cool is the server is going to show you all the subfolders that are in there. So you can see there's a Captivate 6 subfolder, there's the Tilt and Shift, Course 1, Course 2. I've got a number of those folders in there and in this way I can just link, I can just click on Captivate 6 and it's going to automatically load up the index file in that folder. So this was a quick way that I could test it. I'm going to hit play. My course is going to start up. You can see I didn't customize the click boxes or the captions. Here's this nice little interaction. I can click through the different labels and had I put content in here we would be seeing it. Um, I'm, I'm able to test that. I can continue on either by hitting the play button, hitting the next button, whatever I would have in my interface. It's going to go through the rest of the course. Uh, let me just pause it for a second. 
you might realize that, you know what, that interaction was in the wrong spot, or I, I, I should have had a title slide. I want to make a change. Well, I'm going to go back to Captivate, and I'll just make a change, like move um, the, uh, uh, the, the interaction slide. Maybe I'll insert another slide, put it first. Um, let's get crazy and let's apply a theme. Maybe we'll do this sort of sky cloud theme here. Uh, love themes in the new version of, uh, of, of Captivate here, Captivate 6. I might even change this slide template or the slide master to be an introduction slide so that way um, I can put in here, you know, what's new in Captivate 6 as my uh, content. I'll, I'll maybe make this text size a little smaller or something. Uh, doesn't really matter what I do here. I'm, I'm kind of overriding the current themes and formats. I could center it. Um, you know, maybe I don't want this second piece in here. Uh, do whatever we want to do for our, uh, our, our content. But I've applied this new theme. I'm going to republish this. I'm publishing it to that same directory. It's going to generate all the files. It's going to override what's currently there. I don't need to view the output here. Um, I still have the browser open on my desktop. I could refresh that here and see my content. And the nice thing is because I replaced it in that same place on the server, I come back to my iPad, I hit refresh, it's going to reload that page in. I didn't have to upload this to an LMS. I didn't have to, to do anything goofy with it. I can just open this up, hit refresh, and it's going to go take me through that whole new themes applied. It makes that testing process super, super simple. So hopefully this gave you a little idea as kind of a follow-up to my first video here about how the mobile testing process should work. It takes a little bit to get used to it, especially if you're not used to mobile workflows. But once you have it set up, it really will streamline um, your ability to produce uh, e-learning and m-learning content across multiple devices and platforms.